At the end of our gospel lesson today, the people are picking up rocks to throw at Jesus. They don't just want to chase him away. They want to kill him. They want to kill him because Jesus said he was eternal. And it was even worse than that. He said that they did not know God, had no real relationship with him, and that they were not faithful children of uh, Abraham. I, I was noticing when the uh, deacon was reading the, the gospel there, Jesus called him a liar. How bad are you when the Son of God calls you names? <laughs> I just, that thought struck me. Now. But anyway, but just two verses before our gospel starts, he actually called the uh, Jewish leaders the children of the devil. <laughs> Who says our God is a lightweight? That's pretty powerful stuff. He took all of their conceits and all of their pride and he just kind of tore it up, threw it in their faces. And he told them that their only hope was to cling to him and follow him. Well, that kind of stirred up a hornet's nest. No wonder they were grabbing rocks. They only had two choices. Admit that Jesus was right and that they were wrong. You know, repent, humble themselves, that kind of stuff. Or kill the messenger. It was real easy for them, for their choice. Uh, and it's often easy, uh, an easy choice for us today. We don't put it in those terms, but that's what we do. The simple truth. That is the name of this homily. The simple truth about religion is that Jesus is right and we're wrong. <gasps> that Jesus is holy and we're full of sin. Only God's people can stand to hear that message and confess it's true. We do every day. And especially every Sunday, we always confess before communion. Our gospel lesson drops us right in the middle of this confrontation between Jesus and the leaders of the church. These were Jews that were supposed to be God's people, teachers in, in their church, but they weren't. Something was wrong. Here they were in the very presence of the Messiah, the very hope of Israel, and they didn't recognize him. What is worse, they sort of did recognize him, but they rejected him, and they wanted something else, or they at least wanted to stick to the status quo. They didn't believe that the things he told them. They didn't want to believe. They wouldn't accept that he said about them and about life and about himself. They deliberately misunderstood Jesus and called him a liar even when they knew that what he was saying was the truth. They were backed in the corner. They had no choice. It's not much different today, though. What passes itself off as Christianity is stubbornly resistant to Christ. Imagine that. Half of the visible church today wants to believe that they make themselves right with God by their behavior, and the other half wants to believe that it's their good works that makes them right with God. Christians stand in the very presence of God, His true and lively word, the wonderful news of the gospel, and they want to throw it aside. Some of them want uh, God to grow up and be more open-minded. Don't you think so? I mean, gosh, like they are. Be like they are. Accept everything in human behavior and call all religions equal. It's as though they want to deliberately misunderstand the gospel and just like the Jews call God a liar. And of course, that's what they do. But we don't though, do we? Well, we agree with Jesus, right? We agree with that, you know, one might ask you why we don't live like Jesus if we believe him. That's, the answer is simple. We can't. We don't have the ability. We, we are sinful. Uh, our arguments with Jesus are somewhat different from those of the Jews back then, but it's still the same. We want to believe that we're basically good and that our righteousness is better than his, or the simple truth is we sin daily. We're not any better than him. We're not. Jesus had to make his appearance in history because we're corrupt and sinful people, incapable of making ourselves right with God. The part of us that rebels, the part that wants to say that now we have it right, and now we understand that now we're better, and that's part of what's always been wrong. We believe. Sin in us is why divorce is just as common among Christians as it is anyone else. Uh, sin is why self-professed Christian is just as likely to get an abortion, be an alcoholic, commit murder, uh, than an unbeliever or just an outright pagan. These behaviors exist far too commonly among people that should know better. It's still true that many who claim to be Anglican nonetheless hate Anglican doctrine. <laughs> All you got to do is read something from Cranmer. Well, no, I won't go that far. 
This failure to make what we claim we believe part of our innermost being is a powerful reflection of just how sinful and corrupt we are. A lot of professed Christians dismiss doctrines that make uh, which God takes such pains to teach us in the Bible. That's a great book. Just pick it up sometime and read it. <laughs> but Jesus said, if you abide in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine and you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. What he doesn't tell you is that the truth first will make you very mad. Behavior doesn't save. Jesus does. He came and he died because our behavior was damnable. We daily sin and indeed deserve nothing but punishment. That truth, however, wasn't making the Jews free. It was making them angry, just like the truth tends to do. Jesus verbalized the problem to them in this way. He who, who is of God hears the words of God. For this reason you do not hear them because you are not of God. Boy, that's hard. I'm telling you, I'm loving this. That is the simple truth of religion. People hear the truth, and it only makes them angry. They don't believe it because they are not of God. They don't belong to Him, and truth be told, they don't belong. Uh, they don't want to belong to Him. Now, none of us do by nature. We like our sinful nature. That's why we always try to find some way to make our religion work better. You know, we, we try to find the right program, or we try to make the message more palatable, or we try to be more appealing. The truth is that Jesus is right, and we're wrong, and Jesus is holy, and we're not. He has to make us holy. He must rescue us, change us, save us, convert us. If we're going to be saved, we need to be humbled. We need to be repentant. We need to trust in Him for our good and for our goodness. False doctrine is what happens when men refuse to hear the words of Jesus. Bad church practices are what happens when men decide that now they are right with God and they know the truth and they can make things better. They can make things better. Let's improve on that gospel. Okay? Mm -hmm. We have churches all around us reinventing morality using worldly standards. There are scholars everywhere trying to refashion the Word of God in a new translation so it can be more effective when spoken to a woman or more effective when spoken to Muslims or to teenagers or any of those other terrorists. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. He who is of God hears the words of God. For this reason you do not hear them because you are not of God. Those are condemning words. The gospel of Jesus Christ is forgiveness and life, but only for sinners. If you're perfect, you don't need the gospel, right? Those who cannot hear that they are sinners cannot hear that they are forgiven either. They're just as deaf to that as they are to the other. They hear the words, they just don't receive them as God's words, and they do not believe them. It's still going on. People who claim to be God's people are picking up stones. They want a more relevant word. They want a more politically correct word. They want a more considerate word. They want God homogenized and tamed and uh, more respectful of their diversity. Of course, they wouldn't put it just in those words, but any more than the Jews did. The Jews accused Jesus of having a demon. It was easier to speak that lie than to face the truth. He who is of God hears the words of God. Well, here's the problem. Jesus said that the reason they couldn't hear the word in reality, or more precisely, is because they were not of God. They were not of God. Even though they defined their lives around that religion, they drew their identity from the thought that they were the chosen people of God. To hear that they were not of God, that they did not know God, was more than they could bear. And Jesus coupled it with the assertion that he was right and they were wrong. <laughs> and Jesus, uh, he told them that their only hope was to humble themselves before him and follow him because he personally was the only one they called God. How is that? Hey, call me God. <laughs> People today don't want to hear it either. You know, what we think really good of ourselves. They don't want to hear that they're evil. No one does. They don't want to hear that, that they cannot save themselves. They want to hear that all religion, at least the kind that calls themselves Christian, are all the same and are, are all equally valid and that religion is nothing more than what you want to make of it. If they want to jump around with their hands over their heads and make funny noises and feel good about themselves and call that Christianity, well, that's all right. If they want to proclaim that how certain they are that they'll get to heaven, they demand the right 
not only to do it, but that no one should withhold approval of them doing so. You might say that they're picking up stones, just like those in our gospel. And all of this sets us apart from the Jews way back then, is the loving, generous grace of God. We don't deserve it, even now. We still sin, and we still need the grace of God. Jesus is right, and we're wrong. He's holy, and we're evil, except in Him, and by His grace, we can't do anything. The good news is that we have His grace. When we face our sins, and the reality of who we are and repent, we hear the good news. Jesus Christ has redeemed you and me. He traded His holiness and righteousness for our sins and took the judgment of God against us upon the cross. Or, as Isaiah said, he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The whipping that wins peace for us was laid upon his back, and with his stripes we are healed. Mm -hmm. That which he has earned is now ours by his grace. You see, you're still faced with cho two choices. You either humble yourself or set to picking up rocks. The Lenten season invites you to repent. And remember that our lives are to be lives of repentance and not just brief moments of that through this little season of 40 days. Jesus said, I say unto you, if any man keeps my word, he shall never see death. That is the simple truth about religion. Never forget it. Jesus is the gospel. He is what holds us together. He is what brings us here every Sunday. The force of his love for us. That is the simple truth about religion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, remember the words of Jesus Christ, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive.